Hey guys, uh, my eyes are a little bloodshot again. Uh, still sick. Um, if if I seem a little less than enthusiastic, it's not reflective of this card. Well, the first half because it kind of sucked, but it's because I'm kind of sick and tired. So yeah, but I had to review something. I mean, was it been like a month? Over a month? Oh yeah, that gnarly. Uh, yeah, a little accident there. Um, hmm. So our opener was at... I gotta look, I can't remember. Alright, anyway, this is New Japan Alive 2011. Some would argue that the crab was barely alive. Uh, but, you know, we'll get to that. This was uh, December 4th, it was Sunday, I believe. It's like, which is like Monday, was it like... Sunday, by the time it's uh, Sunday here, it's like Monday there, I think. Uh, this is from Ichai, I think. Ichi, Ichi, something like that. Perfectual Gymnasium. 8,000 fans, which is uh, a hell of a lot. It's a sellout, I believe. Our first match is the Machine Gun, Carl Anderson, and Killer Rabbit versus Jado and Galo. Um... Yeah, the crowd killed any possible score you could give this match. I mean, Jesus Christ, I don't like Killer Rabbit, but I'm going to make a little bit of noise for a match. Like, there was nothing. This the, this crowd was so bad, I could hear, this crowd was so quiet, sorry, I could hear Carl Anderson's thoughts. For thinking, what the fuck am I doing performing for these idiots? Uh, just, yeah, dead, dead crowd. I mean, this was like a funeral without the crying uh, yeah I'm pretty sure somebody called the ambulance uh, coroner came in you know, checked everyone out turns out they were just a shitty crowd they weren't really dead but, you know, whatever alright then we had Taguchi Ryusuke Tiger Mask for Tom and Tonga and King Fali unfortunately versus uh, Yanu Tor Yano Toru Ishi Tomohiro Takahashi Yujiro and Rocky Romero. Uh, this was kind of pointless. Uh, yeah, again, the crowd, even a librarian would be like, come on. You make more noise than a library. Uh, yeah, Fali continues his per performances, his at best average performances on uh, pay per views for uh, New Japan. And uh, yeah, I don't know if this guy's wrestling with an injury for the last two years, but. King Fali wrestles like a guy. He wrestles like Andy from Tough Enough during Tough Enough. Like, not even that where he's at now. Uh, just, I don't know. Typical good guy versus bad guy match. Um, completely useless. Uh, after Ishii's last performance, he should have at least got, like, a decent match. This match had no place on a pay per view card, just like the first match didn't. Uh, two completely useless filler matches. I, I get. Uh, if you have an eight match card and you only have like four big feuds or whatever and you want to fill the rest of the card like you put in like you know a couple of shitty matches or not shitty matches but like matches that don't really have importance but when you have ten matches there's no excuse for this they had uh, seven or eight solid matches that they could have put on this and uh, well the first real match of the night in New Japan versus Noah Goto Hiroki and Kushida versus Sugira Takashi and Yoki Atsushi. Uh, like 57% maybe. Um, I don't know. It wasn't a throwaway match. It was uh, Kushida and Aoki do their thing. Uh, unfortunately for them, they thought they could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the big boys. Bad fucking idea. Um, I don't know. The real story though was Sugira and Goto. Uh, yeah, they're facing at Wrestle Kingdom, apparently, and uh, obviously after this match, but, yeah, um, you, you could really, if one person sneezed in the crowd at any place in the crowd out of the 8,000, you would have fucking heard it. I mean, this crowd was, they were fucking dead, man. Uh, yeah, just, the, if you've ever heard, sil the silence was deafening. I think it was in reference to this match. Uh, <sighs> if I were a monk and I had taken a vow of silence and I was in this crowd for whatever reason, 
I'd fucking break my vow of silence to tell the people that make some fucking noise, but, you know, that's just me. Alright, then we had Takayama Yoshihiro and Big Lance Archer versus Makabe Toge, Togi and Inoue Wataru. Uh, this wasn't, uh, wasn't too bad. Uh, you know, Makabe got his running start at Takayama, and, you know, before the belly rang, and they don't like each other. They're facing at Wrestle Kingdom 2, uh, Makabe and, uh, Takayama, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. Archer and Inoue uh, did their part, or Inoue. Inoue took a beating and a half, uh, which, you know, makes sense. He's trying to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with these giants. It's not going to work out most of the time. Uh, Makabe looks motivated. Uh, Takayama looked off. I don't know what it was, but uh, it could have been a silent fucking crowd. I don't really have a score for this match. It wasn't bad. It was, uh, it was bearable. I mean, it actually belonged on here because it built to something. All right, then we had Ten Koji reunion, Tenzan Hiroshi, and Kojima Satoshi versus Izuka Takashi and Hideo Saito. Um, apparently, Saito's playing this deranged character who doesn't really wrestle, and he actually can wrestle. And um, yeah, Charles uh, Schaefer was talking about that uh, from. PuraSpirit.com. Uh, he was talking about. Uh, I don't know how. Uh, hopefully, he gets dropped on his head and his memory comes back and he learns how to wrestle again or something. That's uh, that pretty cool. But I hope that happens too. Uh, for some reason, he has baking powder all over his clothes. I assume he's a baker in his spare time, but I don't know. Um, yeah, ten fucking Koji's back, like biggest team in Japan, like the last like fifteen years or so. And uh, what happens? Oh yeah, the crowd fucking no sells them. Finally, when Kojima comes in for the save, they start getting up for the, like the first time in the entire show. They make noise, and yeah, I don't know. Tenzan and Kojima just whooped the ass, and Hideo Saito and Izuka had a falling out, and Izuka beat the shit out of him afterwards. And uh, I don't know. This match wa wasn't bad for like a royal fucking clusterfuck, but. Overall, it just wasn't that good. Uh, Psycho's obviously turning face. I mean, it's got to go somewhere. Oh, by the way, big, huge shocker. Azuka attacked the fucking announcer again. Attempted rape. This angle is going nowhere. It's fucking stupid now. It was stupid eight months ago. All right, then we had our first big match of the night. IWGP Heavyweight Junior Heavyweight Championship, sorry. Prince Devitt versus the challenger Davey Richards. I uh, just like 69%. Uh, I mean, it was enjoyable. Uh, the match quality definitely stepped it up at this point, but, you know, it wasn't perfect. The crowd was pretty dead for this. Uh, the, you know, you obviously had the Devitt fans because everyone has a hard-on for Devitt in Japan. And, and I I mean, the crowd was, it was bad. It was like a game of croquet between U.S. Senators. I mean, there was nothing there. Um... Yeah, Davies improved a lot in New Japan, but I mean, I don't know. It's like a 12-minute match. Davy might need a little more time than that to put together a good match. But it was fast-paced. It delivered some cringeworthy spots. Uh, you know, uh, bloody Sunday on the uh, ring frame, which just decimated Davy Richards. That was cool, but yeah, I don't know. But at this point, this was definitely the match of the night. All right, then we had the IWGP Intercontinental Championship. Tanaka Masato. The champ versus the challenger MVP. Uh, it's not a bad match at all. It was a hardcore, almost a old school ECW style match. Table spots, chairs, you know. Yeah, you know it was good stuff. It was different for Japan. And uh, I don't know, it was not bad at all, really. It was kind of good. But it wasn't amazing or anything. Could have been much better. The first match was better against each other. All right, then we had the first match I was really looking forward to. Giant Bernard versus Suzuki Minoru. Uh, this has got to be a good 73, 75, you know, in that range type of match. Uh, wasn't really anything I disliked about it uh, besides maybe Bernard, like, shrugging off the uh, knee selling. But quite frankly, uh, some you can do that. I mean, if a guy doesn't, like, really hurt you, you know, you, you like can recover. If you like kick someone in a fight a few times and they're hurting, and you neglect to kick them in the leg again, 
they can keep coming at you, but, you know, it was a little annoying, but not much. Uh, Misu tried to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bernard at first. Big fucking mistake. You might be the biggest badass in wrestling, but if you stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bernard, you better have a fucking gun, buddy. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Bernard's bad wheel played a good part in this match. It was this is kind of the submission expertise to expertise of Suzuki versus the just badass crushing power of Bernard. And yeah, it's a fucking outrageous finish. Uh, really badass stuff. And this is a fan goddamn tastic uh, good match. All right, then we had our co-main event, as I call it: Nakamura Shinsuke versus Naito Tetsuya. 75% really solid match, probably the match of the night at this point. Uh, you know, that and the match right before were pretty good. It's like a co co main event. Uh, anyway, Naito and Nakamura, they don't like each other ever since the G1 where Naito just barely lost to Nakamura. They've, you know, had some heat between each other and uh, they had a couple matches, tag match, singles match, and um, yeah, it was just something I was looking forward to. Finally, some goddamn build for a match. Um, Naito was definitely more focused and serious than he ordinarily is, and not a bunch of dumb posing and shit, and, uh, part of the reason was because he doesn't like Nakamura. The other reason was his elbow was discolored and swollen as fuck. It looked like someone took a claw hammer to it 75 times. I mean, it was ugly, and, uh, it, it's legitimate, by the way, and, uh, every time, uh, the guy hit a, like, a big spot or a drop kick, and he, because... Naito's got a lot of offense where he lands on his own body. And, you know, that's not normally, it, it, you know, it affects you sort of, but when you're injured, you know, it's landing on your elbow, it's not going to help. That thing's like broken. It's pretty gross. Anyway, uh, yeah, Nakamura's swagger, though. I, I've got to mention swagger and his stagger. That's the coolest fucking stagger since John Travolta and Pulp Fiction. I mean, that's a badass fucking walk. Only he could pull it off. Everyone else would think it was on heroin, but not Nakamura. Um, yeah, this match just, it's, you know, it, didn't, it was mostly Nakamura. Naito took it to him early, though, because he knew he was hurt, obviously. Nah. Yeah, and once Nakamura got to that arm, he just beat the shit out of it. Uh, he went for arm bar. He went for an arm bar at one point. Um, he was getting lots of boos. Naito was getting huge cheers. Like, this crowd woke up. This is the first match where it was like, whoa, they're alive. And, uh, it's alive. It was, uh, just, uh, really good stuff. And, um, the match was good, but it wasn't, like, really great or anything. And then the last, like, probably, like, four or three minutes, they went all out. And, uh, uh Naito showed his desperation, went for a bunch of flash pins and nearly got it. And then Nakamura was going for his kill shot. And, just the finish was fantastic. The last, like I said, three or four minutes were just amazing. And this match, given good time with a healthy Naito, uh, you could steal the show. I mean, if Naito is healed for Wrestle Kingdom, they have to do this match. I, I would love, like, I don't know. I want to see something really different. I think these guys can pull out something different. Um, yeah, Naito is getting really good, adding new moves. Uh, he's just got to be a little less like Tanahashi, and I think he's going to be great. Yeah, that's right, Daniel. I like Naito. That's my phone. You're going to ignore that. Uh, yep, so good match, and uh, that's second best match of the night. All right, now here's our match of the night. IWGP Heavyweight Championship of the World. It's not really the world, but whatever. Tanahashi Hiroshi, the champion versus the challenger, Nagata Yuji. Uh, Tanahashi was coming into this match was looking to tie Nagata's 10 title defenses as the record for most title defenses, right? So he was trying to set, tie the record. And uh, yeah, it uh, showed all his defenses and all the Nagata's, and there was a great video package. And, I mean, that got me hyped up. I wasn't really hyped going in, but because I've seen their other matches and they weren't like amazing. But yeah. <sighs> Between the history and the Nagata's last match with Ishii on uh, pay-per-view, uh, this was I was like a kid on Christmas waiting for this one. And uh, the match delivered. It definitely went 10 minutes too long. Uh, I know long matches can be good. Look at Shawn Michaels and Undertaker and matches like that. 
But matches like this don't have to be that long. One thing is, uh, I got Nagata's arm work on uh, on Tanahashi, but Tanahashi's leg work was not a very integral part of the match, and I don't think it was really necessary. I mean, there should have been some, just because it's part of Tanahashi's offense, but I think they should have focused less on that and more on the arm work, and they could have shaved off a good 5-10 minutes of this match. But, you know, even with that, this match got really it got progressively better during about the middle point, about the midpoint, it reached like a like a good steady pace where it's like, hey, a match should have been going at this pace more often. But yeah, and then near the end, the last 15 minutes or so, maybe 10, this shit got off the charts and insane, just really phenomenal wrestling. Nagata showed that he still has the skills. He may be old, but <laughs> he ain't done yet. And uh, Tanahashi show, looked the best I've seen him look in a long time. And this was just a great match and uh, great stuff at the end. Uh, you know, the finish was the finish. It was good. It, it wasn't great, but yeah. I mean, I would have done something a little different, but <sighs> yeah. Really good stuff. I can't wait for the uh, IWGP heavyweight title match at Wrestle Kingdom, which I cannot spoil for you. Actually, I can tell you one of the one of the people in it, uh, Suzuki Minoru, is challenging, which is good because either way, he's facing a baby face everyone loves, and he's the best guy at getting heat in the world. So, uh, good show. I I don't know what to give it like seven out of ten maybe. It's, uh, you should watch it. It's good, but actually, I would watch the last three matches, and really, you don't need to see the rest. Yet, that's right, Davies' match wasn't great. Oh, I didn't give it five stars because it had spots. I like I like myself some good brain busters and stuff like that, but I mean, if there's no point to it, really, why the fuck would I give? Why the fuck would I enjoy it? I like a little logic with my wrestling. I know it's. Contrary to popular belief, but uh, logic and wrestling actually go together. The thing is, you got to suspend people's disbelief. If you can just suspend my disbelief, then that's really its logic, though, because I'm not thinking about it. All right, guys. Uh, I'm going to go pay my bills, actually. It's a little bit late, so, uh, yeah, there's some personal insight. i got to pay bills or I'll be homeless. All right. Enjoy the matches. Ah, <sighs> Wrestle Kingdom, baby. Soon.